So in recent years we've experienced the biggest scandal in the history of game development, which prompted a lot of developers to migrate from Unity to other engines. The end result was that I had to cancel my game and discard 3 years of development on an asset that now nobody ever is going to download. When Ludum Dare 54 was around the corner, I decided to follow the crowd and also switch engines to... Stride 3D. What? Well, there's a misconception that there are only 3 engines on the market, which isn't the case. I've decided to pick Stride because of many different reasons. And after making a game with it, here's what I think of it. It's horrible! It keeps crashing, it's unstable, it has missing features, and sometimes you have to do so many stupid little things for the most basic of features. So it's one of the best engines I've used in a while. And here's the summarization of my experience working with it. Theme, limited space. It's bad, but I didn't have hope anyway. So I wanted to make an Iron Lung-like game where you control a vehicle, but there's no terrain system, so I had to scratch that idea. Instead, I've made a character controller, which was quite simple with their built-in component that actually works. And then I've made this room. I can't believe myself, but this actually made me miss Pro Builder a little bit. Okay, problem. The engine is quite raw. The reason why most people think there are three engines, two engines, is that there are general purpose. Meaning they have a lot of tools, an asset store, they care of building your project, they tuck you in your bed. But the stride engine, the sex engine, what? It just slams a box of utilities on your desk and heads out. Want help getting started? Tough luck, buddy. The documentation isn't even up to date. That is if it even exists. But if you're willing to slowly learn the engine and be prepared for having to do things on your own, it's quite great. I have a deadline of 38 hours. So this is the plan. You are stuck in a room that keeps changing every time you go through a door. Add a healthy code of funny and surrealism, and we can pretend that it's actually interesting. This idea wasn't anything complex and just required me to grasp the basic concepts of the engine, which seemed manageable. To help me and other Unity users understand the differences, the Stride team created this cheat sheet. So when I wanted to detect when a player approached a door, I took a look at it. Here's how we detect collisions in Unity, and here's Stride. To say that the engine likes to overcomplicate things would be an understatement. Just look at the transform script. To get the position within an object, you ask for a position. But if you want its position in the world, you need to get a translation vector from the world matrix, which you have to update to make sure it has proper values. And if you want to get the rotation in a format comprehensible to man, you need to call a method that outputs a vector which has to be assigned to a variable. Why? Why is it different? Can't you just call these things the same and get rid of all of this junk? And I know there's probably some clever explanation for this, but I don't care. This is stupid. But Stride also does some things out better in my opinion than Unity. The word static is almost non-existent, meaning that you have to first find an instance of the thing you need before you can do anything with it, which is a really good way of going about code. And unlike Unity, you can even execute code before the game is launched. The game studio is more of a utility tool as it can even build the game without Visual Studio. There are even ways of making Stride work code only, which is quite handy. Problem. Full screen. You see, Stride only has exclusive full screen, which I didn't want to use for obvious reasons. So I had to code borderless full screen myself, which took 4 hours, where most of the time was spent trying to figure out where they were hiding the screen resolution. And how are we supposed to toggle full screen? By UI, of course. Problem. Stride's UI sucks. I come from Unity land, where the UI system is quite questionable, but with Stride you can't even change the vertical anchor of your text. Not to mention that the UI has post-processing applied by default unless you follow this tutorial that didn't even work for me at first. So I've decided to use a third-party library called Mira. Now, Mira is exists. Its documentation is terrible, and the process of adding it to Stride is a story of itself, but I found it very good. You make UI by code, which I honestly prefer after user working with this thing, but it's also possible to make it with a proper editor if you're into that. One problem I found was that the renderer prevented the game studio from reloading code, forcing me to restart it every time I wanted to use it. And I still don't know why that was, as Mira worked fine in my other project. Someone eventually helped me sort out this issue, however that was two days after the jam. Mira renders its output on the screen, so trying to render UI in the game world is impossible, or at least at my current skill level. I tried battling with Stride's built-in UI, but eventually I gave up and made images in game that I placed on the map. Wait, but what is this? Well, ever since I had to cancel QASIC, I decided to start working on a new version that would be compatible with every engine that can support C Sharp. Currently, I don't have any of the systems working yet, but I've managed to string together the base communication layer, which allowed me to view logs during the jam on an external application. For now, the Remote Inspector is a simple console app, but if I succeed in my plan, people will be able to utilize it to run commands, view logs, and other information of entire buildings of beta testers, or just debug their crappy pixel art game. But for now, we're talking about a game jam, which I must say was quite fun. I finally found a 
used for my crockpot for laying out which doors should lead to which versions of the room. I would mark finished rooms with a green pin, allowing me to easily read what I had to do just by glancing at the board. I also drew sprites, which yes, they look crappy, but last time I didn't participate because I was unable to draw even things like this. And placing them in the scene was quite a breeze. Just let me show you the... Okay, we have to talk about this. Because of how Stride is structured, the game studio uses the same render as the game. Meaning that all your post-processing effects are here and no, you can't disable them. There's probably a way of doing it, but sorry lads, your docs don't have anything like that. The editor itself is just a mess. Outside of the assembly reloading issue I talked about earlier, this thing's just ugly. They've recently updated it with a new theme, but sorry... It's still ugly. Scene navigation randomly decides not to detect my inputs. Increasing values in the property grid via mouse either doesn't work or makes astronomical values. And by the way, did you know you can do math equations in Unity's Inspector? Well, it ain't happening here. Also, either I have paranoia or sometimes the editor would randomly forget the values I assigned. And before you ask, yes, I did save. But credit where credit is due, the slamming tools are 20 times better and copying an object from one entity to another at one time moves it to its proper place. Also, I can press Ctrl Z without the editor crashing, so that's another 20 points over Unity. All my bros use Unity 5 long term support my ass for the endings of the game. I've made this screen that prompted you to press E to restart and reload the scene. Problem. Scene management. In Stride, scenes are more like a collection of entities that can be loaded and unloaded. There is a single main scene that is always present, and that scene has sub-scenes with the actual game content. Then those scenes can have their own sub-scenes, but at that point you're just being quirky. To reload a scene, you have to become Cephus, trying to find documentation on the issue, until you realize that you have to first unload the scene and then reload it, as you're not creating another instance like in some crappy engine from 2005. After finishing the rest of the game and coming up with a name after the weirdest train of thoughts, we have a finished product in just two days. Crap, I forgot I have to use original assets. I've been using two textures from the interwebs for the rooms, and it was impossible to replace them with my artistic skill, so I've decided to participate in the less cool jam category, which gave me an extra day just for making audio. Problem. Audio. As a person that can play the piano at a somewhat proper skill level with great joy, I hate making audio. But I gave it a try anyway. I recorded some footsteps, a door, and I placed my microphone outside my window. Seems good enough. But I still have to have music. I don't have many problems with composing my own melodies, but the production part is where I suffer. So please believe me when I say that this was supposed to be an arrangement of five instruments. Now, playing sounds in stride wasn't that difficult, except that you have to do all of it through code. I can imagine how painful audio would be for a bigger project with many people, but that's not a problem for me right now. And... That was it. So, my overall thoughts on the engine. It's not for everyone, and it will take quite a while for it to stand up even against... The G engine. Even with its many flaws, I think I will stick with it. Although Stride is probably more unstable than Unity, it still feels more robust as I can actually take a look at the engine and sometimes even figure out what's wrong on my own. My main problem right now is the lack of Pro Builder. Some could argue that that's a good thing, but the truth is that it's sadly a part of my workflow. You could say that it's high time for me to learn Blender. No. As for the game, I think it's probably one of my better ones. Besides the new engine, I did a lot of things I usually never do. I was never good at audio, but it's nice seeing people express joy over a silly result of a learning experience. Not got good things up front for- oh. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck no. But then, there are those people that miss every joke, completely not understand my transformative and original take on the theme, judge the art not on how it's put together, but on the base assets themselves, and then complain that the game and humor are too random, in a game that is explicitly marketed as a surreal experience. But hey, at least I've started a cult in the comments, so that must mean something. Now excuse me, as I have a six month long coma to return to. Let's see. I hate you, why?